This episode is brought to you by Fine Sight and Sound, the premier audiovisual integration company serving the greater Wyoming area right out of Sheridan, Wyoming. Go to their website at fssavpro.com or call Aaron Perez at 307-751-6585 for more information and a free consultation. We're with Mackenzie and Taryn. Thanks for coming on Go Be Wyoming. I'm, uh, I'm honored to be your guest host today and got a lot of things to talk about. We're going to talk about how you guys ended up from our last conversation and the travels that you guys did. And uh, in doing my background research on you guys, you seem pretty motivated outside of pageantry. So we're going to talk about work and business and, uh, uh, and uh, Wyoming in general. So let's start us off. How, uh, how are you guys doing and how did the pageants? Uh, you guys were traveling and doing a whole bunch of things, doing your pageant tour. How was that for you guys? It was amazing. I'm grateful for all of the experiences that I had with the girls. I think that that's one of the things that I hold closest to my heart, but I'm grateful for this time that we've kind of had off and real life and focusing on my own personal things. I really appreciated what Mackenzie said about the girls you met. You make so many connections and you realize how many good people there are out in the world. I think a lot of times like you see social media and you look at pageants in a way that you think People are full of themselves and just out for the wrong intentions. And then you get to meet these girls and interact with the leaders and the producers. And you realize that there's so many good intentions and everybody is so good at heart. And we're all so unique, but we share the same values. Like we're motivated. We're loyal people committed to our goals. So you get like a blend of all these people that share the same characteristics. But like we all have our own individual personality, which is cool. Absolutely. I mean, you, when you surround yourself with pe- like-minded individuals, you tend to get along. Powerful. Exactly. <laughs> and yeah, the pageant, the pageant uh, uh, environment to me, it sounds like it's changing. It's changing more to the motivated, the business orientated, the involved community service aspects. How important was that for you guys, uh, for you ladies, when you guys were – running for it and, and considering the pageant and then how, how did that benefit you when you guys ultimately got there? For me personally, I feel like my branding is I've always been motivated and I don't think it is as new in the pageant world to have motivated driven girls. It's just more highlighted because we've kind of taken that on and like, Hey, because I think that we did face a lot of stereotypes, even in, as early as like, 2014 it was like oh this is just like glamorous it's like no like we actually have a voice and we have something to bring the table to and it wasn't ever like officially stated but we all stepped into that role and I think it's getting a lot more powerful I also love it because there are your stereotypical pageant girls and none of them come from Wyoming and so breaking out of these molds allows us to show where we come from in a much more level Mm -hmm. platform to where we can show that motivated, powerful women can come from Wyoming or whatever state that may be, and we all get looked at the same. Yeah. No, I agree. Having that level playing field where it's not like, oh, she's from Wyoming. It's like, oh, she's from Wyoming. Like, that's cool. And I was really proud to represent our state. Well, our state was pretty uh, proud that you guys were representing us, you know, uh, like I said. The business aspect, your personal aspect, and your motivation is it's palpable. So, oh, that makes me happy to hear. Thank you. <laughs> absolutely. Hey, it's uh, it's just attributed to your guys' hard work, you know. And mm. uh, but with the pageantry, you get to travel a little bit. And how? I mean, Wyoming's cool and all, but going to places like New York and traveling all over the country, you get to see and experience different foods, culture, and people. What were some of those experiences like for you? I think they were really eye-opening just because I've never done a ton of travel. Um, But it made me appreciate everywhere else, but it also made me appreciate Wyoming more just because I realized that while there there are aspects of other places that I do love, there are things that just remind me of home that I love even more. But being able to travel to see um, where people come from was so fun. My favorite part was going to Texas because I feel like Texas and Wyoming have some similarities enough that I kind of felt in my element down there. Um, mm-hmm. And it was so exciting to be like big city Wyoming down there. I know. I still haven't experienced 
Texas, which is insane because I feel like I've been to every state, but I haven't been to Texas. But I would say my favorite trip that I was able to go on obviously was Cancun, which I think we've touched a little bit on in the past on other episodes. But I just loved trying all of the authentic food. All the food that I got to eat this year was the biggest plus of traveling as much as I did. But okay, loved then it. what's your favorite type of food? Because mine is probably got to be Indian food. Like that's that's my go to whenever I go out to a big city. I'm I'm going to Indian food first and foremost. I do like I love Indian food, but I have to stick with my tried and true Mexican food. And in Cancun, the guacamole, chef kiss. Oh, it's delicious. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was perfect. What about you, Taryn? I gotta kind of hop on the bandwagon there with Mexican food. I'm kind of a sucker for it, and even though I haven't been to Cancun, which would be so awesome, but I've I feel like I've had some pretty authentic Mexican food, and it's so good. You can't go wrong. No, Amen. you literally can't. That's all right. That's all right. But as you travel, you gotta you gotta expand that Indonesian food. That's the that's the beauty of New York specifically. Didn't you go to? I was gonna say in New yeah. York, there's an Indian restaurant, and I don't know what it's called, but I've been there, and it has lights like hanging from the ceiling. Best chicken ever. I don't know what it's called, so I'm not going to try and like say that, but the chicken that they had was perfect. <laughs> chicken tikka marsala. <laughs> the tikka masala. There's a place in Laramie, Sweet Melissa's, that has that, and it's so good. <laughs> All right. I'm going to have to check that out because uh, going down to Laramie this week for a concert at the Cowboys, so might have oh, to stop fun. by Sweet Melissa's for yeah, sure. Yeah, Sweet Melissa's. Go All and try right. the tikka masala. <laughs> All right. Thanks for that plug. Uh-huh. So, so uh let's um New York is awesome. It's one of my favorite cities. Um lived outside of there for a little bit. Um so I I've, I've got I've got plenty of stories about New York. So it, it uh it was exciting to hear your experience about New York or what what you thought was cool in comparison to Wyoming. For me, it's always mm-hmm. the skyline, right? As you're driving across that the That is breathtaking skyline. for it's sure. Cool. It's unbelievable. But flying back into Wyoming, like if you catch like a 5 p.m. flight back to Wyoming and it's like the sunset, that was always such a sigh of relief for me. Like if I had a busy trip and I was just back in Casper or Laramie and like I was like, I'm home. Because there is something special about being raised in Wyoming and the people here that I just love and it's not ever going to be replaceable. Amen. Especially I feel like the mountains. Like... When I yeah. did, well, when I would look around, like something just felt off and I couldn't quite put my finger on it until I did fly back in. And I was like, okay, the mountains, that's what I've been missing. Like some people, like I've heard them be like, oh, the mountains make me feel claustrophobic. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's, that's where I belong. They make me feel safe. Yeah. Same. Skyscrapers make me feel claustrophobic, but <laughs> it's therapeutic. <I> agree. <laughs> so, uh, Mackenzie, you're from Casper. Taryn, you're from mm-hmm. Kimmer. Or yes. southern, southern Wyoming. Yeah. Nice. And Kimmer, great. And uh, so, yeah, familiar with Wyoming and the mountains uh, are therapeutic for me. You know, always when I travel for work, I would always drive down to Denver so I could drive back just to see nobody on the roads and <laughs> see that, uh, all that Wyoming has to offer. So that's uh, pretty cool. So you guys, along with your busy schedules, you guys have businesses guys are in college how do you manage that type of you know schedule because that's uh you know you can do it for a week or two at a time but to do it consistently Mm -hmm. how do you guys manage that well I have to say like I'm not going to sit here and be like oh it's easy and I'm like some special breed that does it you know like it comes with its like pros and cons but you figure it out like there's always an end goal I want to be successful I have all these things that I want to accomplish so it's like Of course, there might be hard days, but there's always going to be highs with the lows. And with the lows, you appreciate the highs a little bit more. So you just stick it through. I guess persistence for sure. Um, But I guess for me, number one is get a planner. I have to write everything down. I forget everything. And so I have to write everything down so I know what's going on. And then I would say number two is know your tribe and rely on them. Through this, like, I heavily relied on my mom for sure like she was a key element in me being successful 
I would not have been able to do this without her and Mackenzie, like being able to just, whether it's vent to them, keep them in the loop so that they can keep you on top of things. You just have to know when you've reached your limit. And I think that's Mm -hmm. something that's hard, especially for women like us who think like we have to be able to do everything and do it perfectly and do it flawlessly to ask somebody for help and let them see your flaws can be really hard. Mm -hmm. But when you are vulnerable to that, that's when you're going to be able to succeed the most. And Taryn and I, I have to say, we're both very bold people. And I honestly, during Miss USA, my favorite moment, and I don't even think you and I have talked about this since the pageant, but right before my interview, I'm, I was last, obviously. So, like, there wasn't a lot of people waiting. It was just the chaperones and people going through the loft area. And Taryn just, like, popped out out of nowhere. And I was like, no way I get to see her before my interview. And we, like, prayed. And talk about things, but I think there's a lot of beauty in the moments where I've been like, Karen, no, you're fine. Like, stop. Because we're both, you, sometimes you need to hear that. And, like, it's been with me, too. And then there's been moments like, that's iconic. Like, you're doing amazing. Like, the really highs of it. And I think that's been the coolest dynamic to experience with another person. That's incredible. So, you know, you, you guys talked and you worked together throughout the whole process to confide in each other but uh also to deal with the stress of of that um it sounds like you know mental health is something that comes up quite consistently and Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like you you both have a really firm understanding of support system down you know uh appreciating the highs um as opposed to the lows like how did you guys get that type of mentality and do you guys still continue to use each other for support Oh, Karen and I aren't just sisters for like a year. I think we're blessed in that way specifically because our relationship and our friendship is so real that like she's going to be in my wedding and this is going to be something forever that I have. But we do, and I can confidently say, and I know Karen's going to want to touch on this too, but have a lot of experience with mental health. And I think that once you experience those things in life, you're able to help others and talk about it. And I have a blog on my boutique as well, where I write everything out, which helps me internalize. But I mean, Taryn is one of my biggest sounding boards for all of my emotions, just as Mackenzie. And I know that she's that for other people. And, you know, like, it's just the experience. And it's something that we're very comfortable talking about as well, which I think is beautiful. Yeah, I agree with everything Mackenzie has said. And she has been probably, if not the biggest, one of the biggest um, aids and helps with my mental health through this. But I think when you touch on mental health, there's so many different things. And it's so unique to everybody that it's hard to address the topic. But for me, the biggest thing that's gotten me through this pageant experience and really life in general with mental health is knowing who I am and where my value lies. And I know that's with God. And I know that going through this, the people of Wyoming had my back no matter what, no matter what Mm -hmm. somebody said about my dress, no matter what somebody said about, you know, how I presented myself. um, I knew that where I stood with God was in a good place and where I stood with my family and friends from Wyoming was rock solid. And so you just have to know that everybody's going to try to tear you down and that can get to you. I'm not going to lie and say that, that I was solid this whole time. There were times where I wavered and I really struggled with my mental health. And that's something I hadn't really experienced before until this. Um, especially when you get into like body image and yeah, comparison, that's something that hit me like a truck going into this. Um, But I would say relying on God has been my biggest strength through this and knowing that no matter what my body looks like or what dress size I am, that he loves me and appreciates what I'm doing. That was so good, Taryn. I'm so proud of you for that. I want to touch base really quick on the comparison factor of pageants because I feel like sometimes with when you're in our position, and you don't know us personally, you would see, like, the crown and the sash, and you're like, oh, she doesn't have any problems. She doesn't, you know? It's just that preconceived conception of who we are. And I have to say, there were so many moments at Miss USA, because, I mean, there's 51 girls in the same room, in the same hotel, 
that are all beautiful, that are nothing. Like, if you, even if you don't know them, you're like, yeah, she's beautiful. Because I didn't get a chance to talk with every single girl. I wish I did. But it's hard. And I even had my moments, and this is probably going to sound crazy, but I was like, I, am I pretty? Like, because <laughs> you see all these other girls, and so you have to face that while you're at the biggest competition of your life. And then you have all these, like, he- things going on in your head, like, oh, my gosh, people back home are watching. Like, do I look good for them? And that was big for me because I wanted to represent my state with, like, a Mackenzie flair, but still, like, make sure that my state was proud that I was repping them. And I carried that with me heavily throughout the whole process. But I just wanted to say that because for anyone watching, like, we struggle with the same exact thing on a daily basis. Before we get off this topic really quick, I have to just tell you my biggest, like, little moment that happened. I was, like, really struggling going into the pageant because just some things that happened. And obviously, you doubt everything going into this. And one of my mom's friends sent me a message on Facebook And she said, Taryn, she's like, here's the thing. God doesn't care who has the plumpest, fullest lips. He cares who can speak kindly. God doesn't Mm -hmm. care who has the leanest, longest legs. He cares about who can walk and help others along their way. He doesn't care who has the tannest, most beautiful skin. He cares about people who can reflect him through themselves. So when you just realize how much you're capable of on a very raw level, I think that's what's going to get you through any comparison. Because Mm -hmm. once I read that, I was like, yeah, no doubt I'm ready. Yeah, I completely agree with that. This is something that Taryn and I can talk about for literally ever because we're just passionate about it. But I don't know. I think there's so much beauty in those moments. And through my Miss USA experience, I think even throughout the week, I kind of, it started out very strong, like, I have to be perfect. This has to be perfect. And then at one point, I was like, I don't even feel like touching up my fake tan. Like, I was like, I'm Mackenzie. I'm me. And, like, I'm proud of that. And, like, I don't regret a thing because of how authentic I was. And I know Karen feels the same way. So that is my biggest relief, the fact that I don't regret anything because I didn't modify myself based on what other people said, which – there's a lot of things that were said and I didn't modify and I never will. And so that's how you get through these things with no regret. That's awesome. And Mm -hmm. I mean, I couldn't be in on a stage in in front of that many people or knowing that that many people are watching. So, I mean, is that (laughs) your guys' first experience in presenting and have being in front of a large group like that? No, just because I did say our, I'm thinking of state cheer, but varsity cheerleading in high school. I've always loved performing. So, like, when there's a crowd, that's kind of where I light up. I did, though. I had to do a step turn for my swimsuit portion of competition. And the way that I was so in my head over that step turn before I went on stage, and it ended up being my favorite video capture moment of Miss USA. I was like, gosh, if they only knew I was backstage just tripping in my mind about that. <laughs> You weren't tripping. You were visualizing. You were visualizing. Yeah, I was visualizing. I was a little stressed. (laughs) I can imagine. I can definitely imagine. Uh Uh-huh. I would say for me, I mean, yeah, I've done athletics my whole life. I would never say that big of a crowd, like being televised and having that many people watching me. But I've never been scared of that. That's kind of something I've aspired Mm -hmm. to do. I'm the same as Mackenzie. I like when people watch me. I feel like I rise to occasions. And when I'm Uh under that pressure like that's what elevates my performance to the level it needs to be on Mm -hmm. I always say like I could practice all I want but I knew that like nothing was going to compare to the moment that I actually had to execute because of the adrenaline rush and everything that I I don't know what happens inside me but it's like okay go and like I like blacked out but I'm aware of what's going on and I just love that like I'm I've already been thinking of other ways that I can make sure that I can still get that feeling in life because I can't live without it. <laughs> That's awesome. And uh, no doubt the guys, uh, the career path that you two are on, you will be uh, performing or providing board meetings or just running mm-hmm. stuff like you did up there on the stage. So there's That's no doubt nice. about that. You love to hear it. <laughs> Thank a- you. Amen. The good mentality to have. 
And uh, Taryn, one of the quotes that I I heard that I I love that coincides with what you said is, um, you know, God's gift to us is life and how we live our life is our gift to God, Mm -hmm. right? So if you do it with integrity and and being ethical and treating people as they should be treated, I mean, people are going to say good things, but and bad things, but the bad things, man, to be in a, in a spot where you have to criticize someone for representing their, their state and having a talent and, and doing that on a national level, you got to be a pretty small person in order to do that. So way to take that yeah. challenge and way to just power through that. We have yeah. so much love too. Sorry. Oh my God. No, yeah. I feel like we keep interrupting each other, but we both did the love overpowered any of the hate. I mean, it, we both got it, and, like, it's definitely, like, ah, uh, like, I didn't like that, but our support system, I'm so grateful, ugh, grateful for the people that I had in this whole process. Yeah, I was just going to say, there were definitely times where I almost wanted to take a step back on, like, my values and turn into what the pageant people wanted to produce like I had been cut out of videos multiple times for things I would say or how I would present myself things like that they would just cut me out because it wasn't exactly what they wanted and so there was a time where at um, nationals where I was like okay maybe I just start saying what I know they want me to say and then I was like why would I do that why do I want the people at home seeing me spout out some bs answer that I have no connection to at all. Like my face probably wouldn't even look right because I just can't fake things very well. I'm not an actor whatsoever. No. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to keep making them do all their editing skills and take Wyoming out of it because I'm not backing down. And yeah, I felt so much better. And I know if I would have conformed to that, I would have so many regrets and you just can't live like that. Yeah. And I relate to that, especially like in a fashion sense. Um, I was Miss Wyoming Teen USA in 2018, and I feel like, Karen, I have so much respect for her because when I was young and when I was her age, I totally conformed to everything, and I can own that because it's honestly a huge reason why I am the way that I am today. And it was a trial for me, and we all go through trials in life. So when I got to this phase and I'm 21 and I'm Miss Wyoming USA, None of that was on the table. Like, I was not going to change a thing. And I have very bold and edgy style. And people did have a lot to say about it. But I'm so happy with everything that I did at the pageant. And that was just one thing for me that you, what you said, made me think of it. And I love it. (laughs) Well, what I love about, like, our dynamics, Mackenzie, is that our styles and our ways of expressing ourselves are polar opposite. I don't know. I'm wearing white right now. Mackenzie's wearing black. And that's kind of an inside joke. But we are so uh-huh. opposite. Yin and yang. Seriously. <laughs> yes. we, Yin and yang. we really are. <laughs> but whenever one of us was about to conform or about to falter, we'd be like, absolutely not. Like, even though we express ourselves totally different, we knew how to pick each other up. And that's all pageantry can be is Mm -hmm. seeing somebody else question or start to be a little unbalanced and you don't care how different you are. You just want them to be happy and successful in what they are. And so you just pick each other up. And that's what's so beautiful about me and Mackenzie is we may be so different in some ways, but we are the exact same at our morals and in our heart. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. (laughs) That's incredible. And I mean, so as the pageantry is, is winding down, and uh, is, it, is it safe to assume that this, this spring they pick a new Miss Wyoming teen and Miss, Miss Wyoming, right? Yes, yeah. June. So I think it's the same exact day. It's June 19th of this 18th. year. 18th. Something like that. Better check that planner. <laughs> Better check the planner. Yeah. I know. I'm not a date writer or anything. Not, my brain is organized chaos and that's how I roll. <laughs> okay. Yin and yang again. <laughs> but I'll yes. be there. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> what are your guys' responsibilities uh, in June? Do you guys help pick the new winners? I mean, you crown them and, and but what, what, what's that process look like? Honestly, I think we just, just, go for it, Mackenzie. <laughs> we kind of just get to sit back and like chill out, which is going to be nice. I know that Taryn and I are 
coordinating some outfits and getting excited for pictures in our last hurrah. So for me, I'm like done with pageantry. So this is going to be it for me. So I'm really excited for closing this chapter and crowning my successor and just enjoying the pageant. I think another big responsibility of us there is to remind the girls why they're there. I know when I was competing, you know, you get nervous, you get a little whatever, like we're there to be like, Hey, like you're okay. Like let's talk about why you're here. I think we almost get to solidify some of their reasons, just like talking to them Mm -hmm. and being there, being an example, um, just giving them someone to look to for some comfort and acceptance. And so I think that's a huge reason why we need to be at that pageant besides to, to crown the next school. Yeah. And I'm excited to kind of just have fun with the girls and let them know, like, because I feel like they can see us and they want that so bad. Like, they want our crown and our sash, but, like, making them feel warm and welcomed and, like, hey, like, yes, this could totally be you, but just enjoy the moment because it's not life or death. Like, it can happen for anyone and no matter, you can try and try again. So I just want them to have fun and I don't want it to be too serious. I just want them to enjoy the experience. Agreed. Get mm-hmm. that passport ready because you guys are going to be traveling <laughs> once you win. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I'm glad I had mine. So outside of college and uh, so from a business perspective, uh, Mackenzie, you said you had uh, a boutique that uh, has, has gotten some recognition and notoriety and um, mm-hmm. you're business orientated and that's where you're going to gravitate to. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's start talking about uh, the business aspect. And then, Taryn, uh, I know you, that you're in college and you have a little bit uh, longer to go, but what are your plans? Uh, or what are you doing? Because I'm sure you're not just sitting around. Uh-uh. So for me, I started Lovely when I was 19 years old, and it started out as a boutique, and I did wholesale. But as I, I always knew that it was never going to stay stagnant. It wasn't just going to be what it was currently because it – Whatever I do, it has to evolve with me because I'm always changing and I get bored. Like, I I just always get new ideas and I'm like, no, I want to do this. So I transitioned recently to a private label and my first ever crewnecks are coming out and they actually have like my name and my brand sewn in the tag, which I've been working on this since January. And I think those arrive on March 30th because I've been tracking them. <laughs> And I'm really, really excited for that and expanding on that. And then I'm also considering Sports Illustrated Swim Search. So that's something that I'm looking forward to and working on this summer. <laughs> I am so proud of you, Mackenzie. Like, just hearing you talk, like, <laughs> I I know I haven't seen the whole journey, but I've been here through some of it. And I know how much this means and how hard you've worked. Like, I, this isn't easy. People... Uh-huh. These things are easy and they're not. So for me, yeah, I'm in college right now. I go to Utah State, so I live in Logan, and I'm majoring in journalism right now. Um, I'm not quite 100% positive where I'm going to go in that avenue, but I'm really enjoying my schooling. Um, I do have a fun announcement coming up here soon. I haven't really talked to anybody about it. Um, except for my mom and I have my boyfriend I've talked to about it. I was going to text Mackenzie about it. Um, but it's still in the works. So just, it'll be on Instagram here soon, but I'm feeling very blessed and feeling very at peace with where my future is going to go. And it's going to take you guys by surprise. Nobody's ever going to guess what it is, but I just have to finalize a few things and I'm... I've never been happier with what my future is going to be. So I know that's like leaving you on a cliffhanger. Yeah. And I'm no, sorry. I'm edge of my seat over here. I know. Yeah, same. Um, I can't believe I'm not in the know. <laughs> I had to finalize a few things first before I started talking about it. My my family, only my mom and dad know. Like my siblings don't even know. Um, I respect it. I know. It's been something super personal and it's taken a lot of thought and prayer to like come to this decision because it is going to be, it's going to be hard. It's going to be the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, but it's what I need to do. So yeah, give me like two weeks and you guys will be all filled in. It's going to be so fun. I'm marking that down in the planner right now. I figured you would. (laughs) Yeah. That's awesome. Well, 
I mean, we look forward to that. Definitely give us the inside scoop when that happens because I will. If it's anything, uh, yeah, it. I'm sure it's going to be cool and it's have your own. It's going to be private. the coolest, actually. That's awesome. Let's let's promote that definitely, and then having your own clothing line. That's pretty special. Um, yeah, I love it. <laughs> that's incredible. No, no guys like they can't like pop a collar with your name on it. From a, you don't have guys apparel, do you? Men's no. Apparel? So I'm actually my first ever pieces. They're definitely girly. I think I did. I was gonna do, and I still am planning on unisex clothing. But for my first ever crew neck, I personally think anyone can wear them. But I wanted to do rhinestone. I have a gray one and a pink one, and it's just branded lovely in rhinestone which I think is pretty diverse. It just depends on your style. But, I mean, I'm pretty creative when it comes to the creation of clothes and fashion and all of that. So I hope that someday it sparks a nerve with guys. <laughs> we'll see. I think they're scared to order for me. <laughs> I, I know I'm not lovely, clothing. so that shirt probably wouldn't work for me. I'm not that no. lovely. But... <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's lovely on the inside. It's what on the inside matters. Well, if fashion is your passion, I would suggest cornering the men's market in Wyoming because there's nowhere to shop, shop for men. So, you know, Okay, I'm it's, on it. It's tough. You All know right. I take these things seriously. All <laughs> right. Hey, I'm just trying to help you get a leg up on the business aspect. I Don't ever it. challenge Mackenzie's abilities because she will surpass them times a million. So now we know what's coming next. Yep. <laughs> yep. I'll get it done in two weeks. Seriously. I have my business oh my license. Gosh. My mom and my sister were like, yeah, uh, like you probably shouldn't do it. And I had my business license in five days. I was like, watch, watch this. <laughs> they it, did. I mean, getting, getting your clothes shipped at right now, I bet you're watching that tracking intently because everything is late in the shipping industry. So I'm just yeah, like, they were here already. On Tuesday. I'm literally going insane, but I checked tracking and it says they're in Denver, but it, then it says March 30th. And I'm like, we'll see. <sighs> That sounds exciting for both of you. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely. That's, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to that announcement for sure. And any big announcements, feel free to come on and just yell at us and be like, hey, look what I'm doing. Cause, uh, we will. <laughs> good, good. Because what we're trying to harbor too here at Go Be Wyoming is across the platform, whether it's in sports or in fashion or anything, women are, are now coming to be recognized as thought leaders, as, you know, uh, innovators and stuff like that mm -hmm. to the point where th that hasn't always been the norm, right? It's no, you, you, ha you haven't seen women's basketball games on TV before, but now you are. And I, I love that integration and it's becoming quite profitable. So as yeah, we're trying, I think we've definitely closed the gap. Amen. Getting and, like yeah, and we still got progress. Mm -hmm. You know, we still got we still got progress. But as being a business owner, as being a motivated woman, women in in my perspective, in my business uh, experience, we see that all the time, and they run stuff. They, you know, I'm consistently answering to women that are in these positions as CEOs or CTOs or CFOs that are just running stuff, and they're highly respected. Mm -hmm. So trying to build a, a, a corporate uh, women's attitude in Wyoming that hey, women can run stuff. And I think you two are prime examples that, hey, put your mind down and uh, get it done. So mm -hmm. thanks for that. And uh, Those are lessons you can teach while down. Uh, it, where's, where's the pageant uh, in, in June 19th? Where's the pageant? Casper. Okay. So right in your backyard. Yeah. Uh, you it's have nice. home field advantage. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I always have. It's kind of a blessing. <laughs> That's awesome. So you can teach. You can teach and in you know uh, kind of incubate this type of behavior with women that are going to be following suit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being a business owner, how difficult is that? I think my biggest thing is being respected. I actually this past spring, and I I haven't been disrespected. I just don't know if I was always taken seriously. Like when I first started doing it and I had a guy friend come up to me and he was from high school and he's like, honestly, Mackenzie, when I first saw you doing this, I was like, oh gosh, let's see how long this goes. And then you really, you like earned my respect. And I was like, dang, like look at her out here making moves. And I was like, yeah, how dare you disrespect me like that? <laughs> Just kidding. 
<laughs> but um but I not really big, <laughs> but not really yeah. yeah but it's just i never like when people just don't think that i've done everything that i've done and i'm not very open about it but i did create my own website and i've done all the back end things i've shipped my own own orders usps i have a whole lineup with them i mean it's not easy things but those aren't the things that i go on and broadcast about because i don't really feel the need to have like glorification for that but it is the stuff that goes on behind the scenes that i'm like i mean you can judge me but if you would talk to me there's a lot of things that i do that would prove that i am business-minded and very capable absolutely and to run a business you have to be the the owner the shipper all aspects of business yeah totally understand that so Mm -hmm. that's uh that's quite insightful yeah, um, no, it's a blessing for sure. And definitely there's been ups and downs in that. <laughs> but I love it. Keeps you on your toes. Amen. And uh, mm-hmm. being taken seriously, it, it, it comes with experience. And just when you say you're going to do something and then when you deliver it, people then are like, okay, mm-hmm. you have it. But that's uh, that's great because we need more more businesses being opened in Wyoming for sure, especially by women. Yes, I agree. Always. Amen. Um, and Taryn, um, we look forward to that announcement. You know, uh, we, I can't, I can't stress that enough that, uh, that's some big news. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think you guys, it's, you're not gonna expect it at all, but after I, I'm going to, I'll ta- I'll let out some things on Instagram about it. And hopefully people can understand where I'm coming from with it. Because, yeah, it's definitely something very personal and special. But it's going to be hard. It's going to be so hard. Hard is not a word for us. You'll get through it. But you do have my wheels turning. I know. We We love hard. It's not hard. I don't want it. You're right. So when are you when are you two gonna have uh, your own podcast so you can interview people and and uh, yeah that's okay we were low key like okay me and Mackenzie we talk all the time and we come up with the craziest ideas so we think that we need to have our own reality TV show because it would be the best thing ever but maybe we do start out as a podcast because we. Are kind, we I don't have know. good things to say. No, I and we do know. things to say. And I have already been thinking about podcast names because it's something that I really wanted to do. I have like five things on my little table of things that I want to learn. One of them is actually DJing, which I'm excited about. I know that makes no sense, but I love music. And I think that it would be a good way to explore that art. And... um. As for the podcast, I do have a concept for it. It's something that I I started an Instagram page for it in, like, 2020. And it's just been sitting there. But it is locked and loaded, ready to go. So I need your guys' help with some of the setup. But definitely. So right now in school, I'm part of, like, an exchange program. But it's all just, like, virtual. And it's with – um students over in Yemen and we're doing a podcast. So I'm learning all about like podcasting and how to format and how to get things running. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of tools we could use to get this going, but we, I think it'd be a great idea, Mackenzie. Again, like I know we're going to call three seconds after this interview is over and talk about it. So that that's definitely something we're going to be talking about. Yeah, literally he's initiated it. Yeah, we have to do it. You have to now. You just confirm. You know, you you you, you two don't seem like the type of people that will say you're going to do something and then don't do it. So no, we we're follow yeah, through. You on the hook. And <laughs> uh-huh. a foreign exchange program with Yemen. Yes. That's so cool. there are ten American students here at Utah State and ten students over in Yemen, and basically we've just kind of come together and we had to come up with a topic that or a problem, just something we wanted to talk about that was similar between Yemen and here in Utah, but the United States more generally, to kind of build a bridge. Um, There's a lot of differences. There's a lot of stereotypes between the two countries. And there's a lot of problems going on, obviously. And 
our mission really is just to take something educational and be able to talk about it together and bond over it and show that everybody is still a person. And so right now we're discussing a couple different topics. So we're not totally settled on the topic, but we're going to get our podcast out soon and it'll be super exciting. And I hope you guys are able to listen to it because it's so cool to talk to these people clear across the world and they're in a civil war right now. And yet they're still putting their education at the top of their list and working hard. And like my respect for them right now is through the roof. I, Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'd be able to do what they're doing. No, that's That's incredible. I mean, Yemen is, uh, it's, it's less than a third world country as we speak. And to be classified as a third world country, you have to have running water and electricity. And if you don't, you're less than a third world country. And Yemen is experiencing that right now. It's really, uh, there's an international crisis there. So the fact that they're prioritizing their education while the Houthis and Saudi Arabia and civil war and all that's going on, it's quite incredible. So we'll definitely want to tune into that um, to understand that because just I work with uh, a lot of clients in the Middle East as well and their culture and their respect towards God and people are, is pretty incredible. Um, mm-hmm. you know, a whole lot of that type of cultural in Salt Lake City, Utah, Wyoming. We don't have a lot of that. So that's right. really cool. Anything cool, so cool that you learned so far from, from Yemen? Just from the students themselves is I've been able to have just some uh, talks about our culture and just um, how similar we are really with our beliefs and our values and our vision for the future. They are not different. Like, Obviously, there are some cultural differences in how we go about it, but these students that I've been talking to are literally me, just somewhere else in the world. They want the same things. They have the same dreams. They see the same problems as problems, and they love the same way. They, Yeah, they're so similar to us. I hate that we see just differences, and we've let these um, stereotypes build such thick walls that you can't even see through them anymore that I've had to, yeah, wait this long to see the similarities between me and some students in another country. Um, it's, it's been beautiful to, I feel less alone, honestly. Like I felt more connection with these people um, here in Logan doing the exchange program, program as well, but as along with the people from Yemen that like, I feel closer to them than some people here because of how, deep our talks have been and how vulnerable we've had to have been that we understand each other on a level that is very special. That's That's really cool that your school does that. I'm impressed. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. And uh, Yemen just blows me away. You know, I could see like Mm -hmm. Dubai or something, but Yemen's one of the most, uh, one of the poorest countries in in the Middle East right now and dealing with the right. biggest problems. So love to hear that. Yeah, keep mm. us updated on that. That's uh, that's pretty special. I for sure will. Cool. Well, I know you two got busy schedules and we got to coordinate this podcast that you guys are about to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, uh, the podcast? Yeah, we really will probably call right after this. I just know my phone's going to ring. <laughs> Hey, good, good. And, and I'm uh, going to answer. <laughs> you, we, uh, cause we have a sports business nation where we talk about the business of sports. So I'm just saying sideline reporters and interviewing athletes, women athletes would be right up that alley. So we already mm-hmm. got a plan for you if, if you're struggling to find motivation or, or anything like that. Well, you no already know struggle, that that would be cool. We always appreciate the hookup. Wonderful. Connection. <laughs> Heck yeah. We have a great one with you guys, honestly. Sure. Yeah, we enjoy having you on here. I've listened to both of uh, both of the previous podcasts. That's how I did my research, and I was I was very interested and very excited to have this conversation. And uh, yeah, so we're looking forward to what you guys are going to bring to the table. 
um, over the next few months, your big announcements. And uh, is there anything you two want to kind of leave the audience with, with plugs to your social, with plugs to your businesses? Uh, any thoughts that you want to leave the audience with? Um, I always get so weird about doing this part, the plugs and stuff. But um, I don't know. I think my message today, just to, to everyone that does listen in on this, first of all, thank you for taking the time. And I hope that they just find a lot of comfort knowing that we are human. We experience the same things and we've learned how to rise up and we hope that we can inspire someone else out there to rise up and chase greatness. Cause even if you are in Wyoming, Wyoming is a great state. So first of all, really just soak that up and realize that and run with all of your goals because nothing is too big. I guess I would just second all that. She kind of just stole the words out of my mouth, but me and Mackenzie, yeah, we're real people. We struggle. We love, we have highs, we have lows. So one, I would just say like, if you ever need to see that we're real, like reach out to us, like we're more than willing. Yeah. I'd rather talk to people. (laughs) Please do not assume anything about us before talking to us because there are so many things that I know could be assumed about me that are so false. And I would, I would love nothing more than to talk about them and just, yeah, talk with people about their own experiences because I love learning about other people. But, um, yeah, just know that we want to help in any way we can. Like, that's who we are. We like to always be doing something positive. So if there is something that somebody sees we're not fulfilling or something that we could do more, we would love to hear from people so that we can – help to our full potential while we have these titles. And if there's any events in Wyoming that you want us to attend, then go to misswyomingusa.com and book an appearance and we'll be there. <laughs> totally. That's a great plug. And uh, you want to plug your business and where I, where I can buy those lovely shirts? Yes, it's at Shop Lovely on Instagram and then just shoplovely.com for all of those sweatshirts. And then my personal is Mackenzie Lee Kern. Okay. And then my personal is just Taryn.Ryan3. So, Perfect. Yeah. And we'll link your business website uh, here in the next couple of weeks. Oh, thank you so much for that. I Absolutely. appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, it was a pleasure. Um, this is definitely going to be a – a motivational um, uh, podcast, I think, for uh, the lovely ladies that you're going to see in June that are competing for your guys' title on Sash. Um, that's exciting. And uh-huh. uh, yeah, you, thank you. Thank you so much. It was a great conversation. We're looking forward to your developments. And uh, you can hit us up anytime to give announcements, to t- talk. If my phone rings after this, I'll pick it up too. So Okay, cool. <laughs> Love it. And also, you guys should try. We would love to do an in-person podcast with you at some point, if possible. Absolutely. We will definitely make that possible, even if I have to yes. drive down to Jasper. Mm-hmm. No, we can drive to Sharon, and I have no okay, problem. My best we'll, is in Sheridan. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sheridan's going to happen. We're going to have a sweet podcast studio. You guys can – You get, who, who else should we put up on the wall of greatness? Who do you have? Uh, just a whole lot. I mean, we have a whole uh, Mother Teresa. Well, my hero is George Washington. So if you don't have him up there, he needs to go up there for sure. On it. On it. Perfect. Okay. I have to think about my answer a little bit. I'll let you guys know. <laughs> okay. No worries. There's my cliffhanger. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate you both. And uh, until next time. Thank you so much. Until next time, thank you. Cheers. This episode of Go Be Wyoming is brought to you by Fly Sheridan. Save time, fly local, fly Sheridan. 